Last year, I spent six months making this cosplay, the 15th anniversary Miku figure. And by the time I'd finished, several sites had started to offer their own factory-made versions of it. And since seeing them, I have been dying to get my hands on one to see how a factory tackles such a gargantuan project. But my curiosity alone was not enough to justify the $100 price tag. But then, a couple of my friends down in Florida found one abandoned at a Goodwill. That's right, today we're gonna get to see what a factory-made Strawberry Miku looks like and how it compares to what I made last year. You'd think with factory equipment, they'd be able to make a much better cosplay than what I did in my two-bedroom apartment, right? Right? Oh yeah. This is real. In this bag is almost an entire Strawberry Miku cosplay. I'm so freaking excited. Uh, before I open this, I do want to tell you the actual story of how this came into my possession. Basically, two friends of mine found a whole Strawberry Miku cosplay in their local Goodwill and sent me photos of it. And I was like, can I borrow that for a video? And we did the handoff at Dragon Con and now I have a bag full of Strawberry Miku. They did say that some parts are missing, but yeah, a big thank you to my friends Lux and Annie for letting me borrow this. I will be sending this back to them, but I'll put their social links in the description, so if you want to see this cosplay get worn and have its own full life again, you can go follow them. Anyway, I'm gonna get it open now, oh my god. I did see parts of this in pictures, so I have a little bit of an idea of what we've got in here, but for the most part I have no idea, but okay. So this I did see in the photos. <laughs> the lace on the bows are printed. We have no actual real lace. All right. <laughs> I'm actually like, I'm only holding one piece and I already feel like I have so much to show you. I guess the first thing I'll show you is this part of the bow here is just raw edges, but this part of the bow is bag lined. So that's nice. That's a nice quality piece. The tails are bag lined and it is printed on both sides. It is that kind of fabric uh, and I actually don't know what you call this kind of fabric. It's that kind of polyester that you basically only see on factory made cosplays and like Halloween costumes. It's almost like it's ribbed. If anybody knows what this kind of fabric is called, please tell me because I don't actually know, but it is some kind of polyester. If you own any pre-made cosplay, you know what I'm talking about. It's that kind of polyester, but it doesn't feel like gross or anything. Okay, there's the bow. We have, oh, the necktie, which is made out of a different shinier polyester. And then the treble clef is just some kind of gold vinyl. And then the tie pins are also just gold vinyl that have been sewn directly onto the fabric. But this one is a full loop bow can stick my thumbs in there. It does make a loop. And then these are also lined. So it's not bad. It's just a little shiny. Ooh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Well, here's the corset, uh, which is not a corset. Ooh, we get our first look at the size tag. It is a small. That's the other thing is I will try to put this on, but it's probably not gonna fit. Uh, but yeah, so obviously when I made mine, I made mine a corset because I like the way corsets look. The other thing about a piece that goes right here, right, is if you bend over, it's probably gonna flop a little bit. So even if you made this and didn't make it a corset, you'd still wanna put boning in it so that it doesn't flop around. This has no boning to speak of, but it is fully bag lined. So there's fabric on both sides. There's no raw edges anywhere. This lace appears to just be like laser cut or something. Uh, and it's a little unevenly cut. It looks a little weird and wonky. And then the stripes here are just grow grain ribbon, which I would say is pretty standard. And then again, it's that slightly shinier red polyester. But then there's also two extra little pieces of Velcro here, which I'm guessing goes to something else on the cosplay, maybe the bow. And it's very small and is not gonna fit me. But there's the corset. This one is very different than what I made. All right, and we have a big bag. Ooh, Ooh, sleeves, okay. Here's the sleeve, okay. <laughs> so the gold details are just printed. A lot of the details on these are just all printed. Uh, it has buttons on the cuff, but they are not functional. The cuff is a little bit stretchy though, so that's good. Construction's going downhill a little bit because this edge, the hem of these ruffles on the sleeve are just 
surged. If you're unfamiliar with what I mean by that, a serger is a special kind of sewing machine and its biggest purpose is locking in the edges of fabric so that they don't fray, which is why sometimes they're called overlockers and the stitch they create is called an overlock stitch. To make that stitch, it uses two or more needles and three or more spools of thread and a knife to cut the fabric at a clean edge when you sew it. There's also a whole system inside of them to get those threads where they need to be and usually thread them is a huge pain, but mine's actually an air threader, so I just have to hit a button to get them in. Yeah, it's kind of magic. This machine was given to me by Bernina, and I have an affiliate link in the description for it. Anyway, if you look at any commercially made clothing you have, you'll probably see some surging. That surged edge is strong enough to keep the fabric from fraying through almost anything. But while there are some cases where decorative surging is used on the outside of garments, it's typically supposed to be only on the inside. So for Goodwill Me, it's not like this is gonna fall apart anytime soon, but it tells me that time and care were not taken to create clean lines on the outside of this cosplay. Most of the time, you wouldn't just have the edge surged. You might surge it and then fold it over and fold it over again, but you wouldn't just surge it. And then these are not bag line. The insides of these are also just surged. My cuffs are actually lined like a proper cuff. This I wouldn't say is like a, a bad quality thing. I would say this is like mid tier quality, this inside here, cause it's just surged, uh, but it, it's definitely not fancy quality, right? And then the top here just has some elastic in it. And then probably the lowest quality thing about this is that these ruffles at the top are just cut. Now it doesn't look like this polyester phrase very much. So it looks like that won't fray at all, but that's definitely not like a high quality way to finish something. But, and it also looks like the ribbon is just running through holes that were literally just cut in the fabric. Uh, but there is ribbon. It is a Miku sleeve. We have a sleeve. Oh, this is the head ruffle. Oh no, this is like the garter. Huh, okay. So this goes around your leg. Interestingly, the ruffle on top of this does not have any finishing on it, but the ruffle on top of this is once again, just a surged edge. And then the holes are just cut. Oh, here we go. Here's the headband. Oh, it's actually like, a pair of headphones. This is interesting. I would assume this is how most normal people would go about making this piece of this cosplay is to actually make like an actual headband. Mine is obviously weird because my wig is so weird. This ruffle is made exactly the same way the garter ruffle was made. It's just a surged edge. Once again, the holes for the ribbon, which is on a headband are just cut. And then these feel like EVA foam. They could be any kind of foam, but they feel like EVA foam that has been wrapped in a printed fabric with the strawberry print on it. And then what it appears to be is they did one plain piece of EVA foam, one printed piece of EVA foam, and then they glued them together over the headband, which is honestly not a bad way to do this. Oh, this is kind of cute. What is this? What is this? I honestly have no earthly idea what this is. It looks like it might be a wrist cuff, but like who could get their hand in there? Like it, it looks like it's supposed to be a wrist cuff, but this cosplay doesn't have a wrist cuff. Am I stupid? What? Oh, is that? Oh, it. this is the pigtail flounce. That, okay, so this goes around your pigtail. At, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it goes like this. It's the pigtail flounce. On the design, they're not lace, they're just solid white scallops, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing it in lace, but it's also very small. And it's also, when I when I pulled this out, I was like, did the person that bought this make this themselves? Because this is like three degrees for, oh, it fell apart. I will fix that for Annie. Sorry, Annie. Uh, but yeah, this is, this appears to be the pigtail flounce. I didn't mention this on the other one, but for the strawberries, we just have these little strawberry cabochons that are very cute. And then just a little silk flower. Okay. Uh, I would assume this is one of the hair bows. It has a hair tie on it, but it is relatively small for how big the hair bows are actually supposed to be. Though this could be a bow that goes to anything because there's like 5 million bows on this cosplay. It is made of grosgrain ribbon, very wide grosgrain ribbon. The lace appears to just be glued onto it. Uh, and then the lace is not on this part. And if this is the hair bow that goes on the bottom of the pigtails, these are supposed to have, oh, I see another one of these. So maybe these are the hair bows, but there's only, I only see two of these. So I guess these are the hair bows. 
because these are huge and these are correct. Oh, there's like three of these. Okay. I have two hair bows that have lace on the tails, but not on the loops and one hair bow that has nothing on it. And I will have to look at my cosplay because I don't know what these are for. I really don't. I know there's a million bows on this cosplay. These, I don't know. We have another garter, uh, but the thing is only one of the garter tabs is actually supposed to have the strawberry on it. Only one of them has a strawberry and both of these have a strawberry. But that's something you could easily fix if you wanted to be like accurate. Okay, now I'm really confused because I think this is the pigtail flounce and I have two of them. So if these are the pigtail flounces, what the f is this? And these, oh, these definitely are because these have the flowers on them, which are little, that is definitely a Sakura flower and not a strawberry flower. Yeah, now I have no idea what this is because there's only one of them. All right, let's get to the big boy. Let's see this dress. Oh, well, I'm gonna pull out the blouse first because you know what this has on it. The Goodwill tag, $12. $12 for an entire Strawberry Miku cosplay, $12. And the blouse is also a small and it looks very small. First off, the pin tucks look nice. They're pretty wide pin tucks, uh, which I don't hate. The buttons are functional buttons. We have functional buttons, but the button placket uh, is not like professionally installed because the backside of it, instead of being turned over like you would on a regular shirt, it's actually just surged and stitched down, uh, which is fine, but you know, where the ruffle comes in is actually basically identical to mine because where my ruffles come in, they're just surged and so into this piece of the pattern. I'm not gonna be a conspiracy theorist here. I'm not gonna sit here. Okay, I'm realizing that this blouse is almost exactly patterned the same way I patterned mine, like to a T. But to be fair, this is kind of the only way you would pattern something like this with the inset ruffle. But part of me is also like being a little bit of a conspiracy theorist and being like, my pattern is up for free. I don't think it's my pattern. The only difference <laughs> is that uh, they've actually installed the collar nicer than I did. They did a band collar, which means they have a whole little band in here, which is nicer than mine actually. Uh, and then we have our nice little Peter Pan collar. The stripe is just printed on, it's not a real stripe. But yeah, the collar is, is very well installed. The pattern does look identical to mine other than it being smaller. The shapes are exactly the same. And honestly, I, I won't be too much of a conspiracy theorist because I'm also like, well, this is the only way you would pattern this blouse. And you know, the channel is larger now. I'm still a pretty small YouTuber, but when I was making this, the channel was very small. So the likelihood that whoever works at whatever company made this, which by the way, we don't even know yet, the likelihood that whoever works there and is responsible for their patterns found my video and then went and found my pattern and stole it is probably pretty slim. And it's probably just that this is the only way you would pattern this. Uh, but it still is, it still makes me pause. Uh, but yeah, the sleeve holes are just surged and then turned under. The ruffle itself is just surged on the edge. And then the line is again, just printed. It's a fine blouse. It's not, you know, a fancily made blouse. It's not a professionally tailored blouse, but it's a blouse. The collar's great. I'll give them that. The collar's better than mine. Okay, time for the skirt. Oh, okay. First of all, elastic waistband. That is very small. That might go over my body, but I'm not sure. Oh, oh. The scallops are surged. They didn't even do real scallops. They're just surged. How, how do you even surge on a curve like that? How? Oh, and then the gingham. It's not even real gingham. It's printed gingham. Why would you not just get real gingham? Why would you, why would, it's, it's also like smaller gingham than it's supposed to be. Why wouldn't you just get real gingham? Probably because this white polyester is cheaper. Okay. So this skirt from memory is supposed to be a skirt on the bottom and then 
the main skirt and then the flounce and then the gingham skirt. So, do we have the skirt on the bottom? We do. We have our little... again the edges of this are just surged okay so moving on to this why why okay moving on to the main skirt the pattern is printed as you probably expect it's not like the printing on these are like bad the one thing i i don't like about it is that the flowers have a black outline and nothing else has a black outline. And I know here on YouTube, I break that law all the time, but it's generally like a design mm, poo poo to have a design where some things don't have outlines and some things do. So my eye immediately goes to that black outline. And I get why they did it because the dress is white and the flowers are supposed to be white, but they also printed the flowers as like off white. But as it is, that drives me crazy. The leaves, so the bottom of the music notes are supposed to be like full leaves, but they're just a little, they're just a little poop. Don't love that. The biggest thing about this and what I expected and what I've seen from looking at photos of these is that this skirt is completely unlined. So you get this big chunk of all the surging of the ruffle just out in the skirt. And because it's a high-low skirt, you're gonna see that on the back. So that's just gonna be hanging down and you're just gonna be able to see all that surging just everywhere. I do wanna see how this is patterned though. Oh, is there not a seam? There's not a seam. So this is patterned very differently than mine. This appears to just be a full circle skirt. So what they did here was they created a full circle skirt and then did the shaping on it to do the high-low thing, uh, which is honestly what I should have done. My big problem with my skirt is that I did a gathered circle skirt. So it was a lot of fabric and it's heavy, uh, but this is very light. Moving on up, we have, I already talked about the gingham skirt. Uh, it is not real gingham. The red lines are just printed and then the bows are just tiny bows made of that same shiny fabric. And there's some messy stuff going on in the back of these here, but that's okay. And then we have the white flounce, which is flouncing. It's flouncing, but the bottom of this again is just surged. I will say this bow is sad. This bow is supposed to be like twice as big as this is. It's made out of that very shiny satin and the ribbon on it is sort of puckering it a lot. Once again, we have the Sakura flower, and then we have our little ring of pearls here, which is, again, supposed to be, this whole thing is supposed to be bigger than this. But yeah, the, the white ribbon on that polyester has caused some sad things to happen. And then all of them are going into the elastic waistband, which is not a bad choice. So that's all of the pieces. Oh, another thing I just noticed is the, um, there is some red, like, bleeding on the button holes. So the buttons have been bleeding onto the white fabric, which is not good. Uh, but anyway, now that I've gotten a good look at this, I am gonna try to find out where this came from. This might be kind of hard because all the tag says is small. I did try to go ahead and look up where this came from, from the photos that I was sent and I wasn't able to quite pin it down. I suspect that I won't be able to find a definitive answer, but I'm gonna be able to rule a couple places out because there are lots of different versions of this particular cosplay and they all range wildly in quality. And from the ones I have seen, I would say this is one of the lower quality ones. So I'm gonna try to find out where this came from. And I've pulled these two pieces because I feel like these are gonna be the key because this is a pretty specific little flower and I still don't know what this is for, but the big thing is I'm pretty sure this should always be visible on all the listings. So if we can find this, that'll be the key. Alright, Miku cosplay. Obviously there's lots of places that are selling this. 
Okay, I'm just gonna start opening listings. So we have one from AliExpress, one from what says Magic Wardrobe, something called Ye Cosplay. I'm gonna go ahead and open the Doki Doki. Oh, hey, it's me. <laughs> Uh, okay. There's another one on AliExpress. Another one on AliExpress. Okay, yeah, this is why I know it's not the Doki Doki. Because the Doki Doki one has lace on the bow. Oh, the back bow is entirely missing. I just realized that. The whole back bow is not here. But, oh, see? I told you this would be the key. This doesn't look anything like this. So, Doki Doki is out. This is... Ye cosplay. We have the black outline on the flower at Ye cosplay. Oh, this is exactly what it looks like. Oh, 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 okay. It could be this one. This is it. This is exactly it. But then the question is, okay, it can't be this one. It's not this one from AliExpress, but there's a bunch on AliExpress. Oh, what? $21? Oh, look, it's this thing. Oh no, wait, that's, those are the things. It's the same one. And it's $21. Oh, it's $21 for the wig. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, the wig was $21. The costume is $94 and the shoes are 50. Those shoes are ugly. Anyway, this is the same one. This is the same sad bow. Who's selling it? Is this just that company? Dance Costume Dress Factory. So it appears this is the same costume. I'm the, the big thing here, the big tell to know for sure that this is the same costume is gonna be the size chart. The skirt is gonna give me our waist measurement. Okay, the skirt is about 24 inches or about 61 centimeters. So the minimum length should be 24 inches or 61 centimeters for the waist measurement. And the small on this, the waist, is 62 to 66. This also looks like it's the same cosplay. Look at the flower. I was gonna go see if this one has the same measurement. Let's, let's look. Waist. This one says it's slightly larger. Oh, that says men's. Oh, waist, small. Oh, it's the same. It's the same cosplay on a different website. This one looks exactly the same. Waist 24, what did I say? 24 inches. This is the same cosplay on Magic Wardrobe's Ye cosplay and AliExpress for about the same price though. This one's like $20 more. So this cosplay could be from any of these places, but essentially what that tells me is there is one factory in China that is cranking out this version of the Strawberry Miku cosplay at this specific quality. And all of these other companies are just buying it from this one factory and selling it. And I still don't know what this is. <laughs> Who's gonna, which one of you is gonna tell me what this is and what is it for? Wait, they just have a bow? Is that what those little bows are for? They just, like, why is there just a little bow right here? This isn't even on this listing. And honestly, this looks like Joanne's lace. I think the person that donated this to the Goodwill might've just made this. Maybe they wanted like fancier headpieces. I don't know because it's not in this listing. It's not in this listing either. And it's not in this listing. What were the little bows? Why are there three little bows? What do those even go to? I guess the fork? Maybe they came with the wig? Maybe they were for the shoes. Maybe it was two for the shoes and one for the fork. Well, I can't tell for sure where exactly it came from, but what I do know now is that its original price was somewhere around $100. And I can already say that I don't think this quality is worth $100 of your money. Now that said, it's also not lost on me that even at this quality, this costume should probably cost more than $100. Uh, I'm gonna try to put this thing on my body now. Uh, the issue is I don't have a 24 inch waist. <laughs> what was the max waist? Almost 26. I might be able to get this on my waist, but I don't think it's gonna go over my hips, but I can try to shimmy in there. But I know the blouse is not gonna fit. Okay. I managed to get the skirt on. It uh, did not want to go over my hips, but I forced it and it did not rip or anything. The issue here is uh, it doesn't have a zipper. It's just elasticated. So if you're at all considering buying this cosplay, make sure your hip measurement is also smaller than the widest waist measurement or you're not gonna have a fun time trying to get this skirt on. I'm wearing shorts underneath it because again, just a loincloth, uh, but I mean, it's obviously looking pretty sad because I don't have any structure underneath it, 
but let me see if I can get the rest of the cosplay on. I know I will not be able to get this shirt closed. We'll get an idea of what it looks like. Yeah, that's not gonna close, but that's okay. Sleeveys, sleeve went on. That actually feels pretty good and secure, and it seems like, yeah, you can tighten the ribbons to really make them stay, so that's not bad at all. There's obviously no structure inside them, so they're not gonna poof out like mine do, because mine have sleeve supports in them but you could make sleeve supports for it. All right, these go on the wig, so I can't do anything with these. These go on my legs. I did just put on some like white thigh highs that I have. These garters, I imagine, would probably not stay super well. Wow, garter, woo, other garter. I would hope that the socks that these came with had some kind of like, even just like a little belt loop on the top of the socks to help keep the garters up, but uh, I don't really have hopes for that. And then this is not gonna go around me for sure. But I can tuck it into the skirt, that's okay. Maybe, 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 okay, it kind of went around. See, this is what I mean by, this is why I made mine a corset. You see how, you know, obviously this doesn't fit me super well, but it's already doing this. That's not fun. That's easily fixed with boning. And honestly, you could add boning to this. We have mystery bows that I still don't know what they're for. Maybe I'll find out when I look at my cosplay. We have the treble clef, and I'll put this on too. How do I look? Oh, I mean, it's not a fair comparison because this doesn't fit me, <laughs> but you know, it's not, it's not totally bad. It's a piece of clothing. It, I'm wearing it, it's on my body. The shirt doesn't close, but that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna try to help this skirt out a little bit. I'm just gonna put on like a regular hoop skirt, a regular schmegular short hoop skirt. This hoop skirt, by the way, is for a future project that you will be seeing soon. So if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe so you can see what this hoop skirt's for. I gotta get my flap out of there. Come on, flap. Hoop skirt's a little long for this cosplay, but that's fine. Okay, that certainly looks a little less sad. It is like coming forward on my cosplay. I don't even know if this particular part was in any of the videos. I know I showed you how I made one bum pad, but on my actual cosplay, I actually have two bum pads in the back. I have the big one I made in the video, and then I ended up making another smaller one that also goes on. And all of that does is just help keep it backward. So it sits like this instead of like that. But yeah, it looks a lot less sad when you wear a hoop skirt with it. It's definitely a lot lighter than my cosplay, I'll give it that. But again, this is unlined. So as you can see on the back, you can A, see the pattern right through it and B, see all of that surging on the inside. So that's not super high quality, but I will say I like this ruffle better than mine. I don't like my ruffle, but yeah, here's $12 Goodwill Miku. So I thought it would be fun to judge this cosplay as if it was entered into a costume contest. Okay, I didn't make this super clear, so I need to clear it up real quick. This is a hypothetical situation in which I am judging this cosplay as if an individual person made the cosplay the same way a factory made the cosplay, not as if someone entered with a cosplay they themselves didn't make. Because obviously you can't judge someone's craftsmanship if they didn't make it. Anyway, do I think it would place at all? That really depends. Costume contests are always, always determined determined on who else entered, right? If this was the only costume entered in maybe the novice category, and maybe all of the other costumes in the novice category were covered in hot glue strings and had unfinished edges everywhere, maybe it could win the novice category, but it's big downfall. It's covered in just surged edges, which is not a super professional way to finish a garment. So the only way it would ever really place is if there was nothing else in its category that was remotely well-made. But that said, uh, I will give it points for the pattern. The way that inset ruffle is installed is literally exactly how I did it. The pattern for it is good. I think the pattern for it is better than my pattern. The biggest thing I would take points away for, A, that bottom skirt not being an entire skirt, the 
scallops being surged. Like, I could forgive a surged edge in some places, but the scallops being surged is like, no. And then the bottom of the skirt not being lined at all. Aligning isn't even really a thing that's hard to do. It just takes more fabric. And I see why they didn't do it, because it would cost more money to have an entire other layer of fabric down there. But it also completely exposes the backside of that pattern on the front of the costume, which I don't think looks super good. Uh, but it's your cosplay, and if you have this one and you don't mind that you can see that, then I'm not making fun of you, but if it was in a costume contest, I'd be like, mm, mm Okay, the big thing here is I don't wanna be too harsh, cause you gotta remember that this was still made by human hands, and the human hands that made it were not the same that made the decisions about why it was sewn or made that way. All of the decisions were not determined by how nice they'd make the cosplay look, they were determined by how profit could be maximized. It takes time to do more than just surge the edges, so that saves money. It saves fabric to not make the bottom skirt an entire skirt. And apparently, it saves money to just print gingham. When you buy a factory-made cosplay, you're essentially paying for someone to make something for you with equipment that you don't have access to or skills that you don't have yet. I think that even if you're a beginner, you can make a higher quality version of this cosplay, even if you just have a sewing machine. But honestly, if you made it yourself, it would probably end up costing more than the $100 price tag. But if you did make it, you'd end up with a cosplay that was custom fit to you, custom designed by you, and it gives you the opportunity to learn how to make something. And I think we all cherish cosplays a little bit more when they're made with love instead of made for profit. I want to make it clear, I'm not an anti-buying cosplay person. I do think if you're buying lots and lots of cosplays per month just to make like a couple TikToks out of them, I think that practice is a little wasteful, but I don't think most people are doing that. I think most people are buying one or two cosplays a year for their one or two conventions they go to a year, and I think that's totally fine. And I think the number of people that are buying Way too many cosplays is lower than we think it is, though maybe I'm just not looking at TikTok. Anyway, I don't know where I'm going with this. Buying cosplays isn't bad, but making them for yourself, it can be a much more empowering process. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. Before you go, I have merch. Look at it. Look how cute it is. I got this spooky one, very perfect for Halloween. They don't come cropped, by the way, I cropped this one. Uh, I have this design and a couple other designs. I have a cute like strawberry space one and one with my starfish girl on it. And and they're all really cute. I picked Bonfire because Bonfire does it like made to order. So they might take a little while to get to you if you do get one. But I think made to order is like better for the environment. I'm not super sure. I'm not super smart about those kind of things, but I think that's how it works anyway. Uh, yeah, if you think it's cute, maybe go get one. There's a link in the description anyway. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. What do I say? Break a needle on that like button or leave a comment or subscribe, please do subscribe, or send the video to your friends or your mom. And if you want to support the channel directly and get some exclusive content, you can check out my Patreon. But if you're just watching, liking, commenting, sending the video to a friend or your mom, or subscribing, then you're supporting the channel too. Or if you're buying merch, you're also directly supporting the channel. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Bye. Thank you to the patrons, White Rabbit Cosplays, Hachi, Sweet Spectre, Still Beating Heart of Jeff Gordon, Nicole, Moss the Demon Dude, Donna, A Bit of Cake, Jay, Camille, Ethan, Maple Fran Cakes, Red Rover Dose, Peste at Calera, Darian, Grassy Peppers, Tiny Wyvern, Polite Crow asking if you might kindly open the bins for a little rummage, Bee Man, Elias, Lot of Bees, Opal Orchard, Terror Bear, Ray Zach, Sophie, Savannah, He Made Airy Cosplay, Cookie, Honeybean, Brittany, Lena, Butter, Shelly, Lay, Cordon, Nora, Lollipop, Jester, Marshy, Tooty Fruity, Kelly, Spooky Kitsune Cosplay, Luxtrous Cosplay, Jennifer, Abby, Lily, Lunar Lepris Cosplay, Shiri, Hadil, No Roman, LOL, Katie, Amai Jelly, Lady Blue Cosplay, Fake Smiley 7, Sebastian, Amar, Simrel, Matcha Kit Kat, Walter, Stephanie, Mo, Jodai, Coconuts, Nightwolf, Bingus Owl, Alora Polaris Cosplay, Aaron, Tomaki Potato, Gabby Bear, Jesse Chu, Sarah, Kiwi Kikos, Another Zip Tie, Hazel, Alec, Jenny, Lady Senshi, Remberland Cosplay, Empty, Gret, Jenna, Kazmira, Rory, Astrofox, 
Fox, Kimberly, Tam Tam the Tailor, Ray Sparks, Naneru, Legfish, Amanda, Connie, Paul, Joby, GT Cosplay, Zihibi, Cal, Sansuffle, Flair, Claudia, Ryan Like Wine, Alyssa, Queen Platypus, Foxy McLoxy, Taylor, Tessa Bo, Shell, Alyssa, Melissa, Akima Aki, Chibi Lease, Rainbow Lola, Gloom Shroom, Infinite Salad, Sephestra, Kelly, Hubasta, Magda, Chai, Alba and Brent, Sleepy Ellie, Audrey, Ben, Spacey Stitches, Sunny, Coco Yumi, Skasa, Ariana, Articus the Tiger, Gulf Miner, Food Penguin, Emmy, Alyssa, Katie, Experimental Blue, Toby, Alice, Rebecca, Slushbuff, aka Corn Copy, Samantha, Faybound, Adriana, Amber, Kim, Saigni Cosplay, Kaimatsu, Block Kitty DJ, Meredith, Taylor, Sarah, Calbones, Gaia, Lularush Cosplay, Delos, Fluffy Hair, Marcy, So Into Music, Julian, Cam, Zen, Andrew, Pins, Snip, and Clark.